and welcome to the Puppetize Digital Session for the Service Graph Connector for Puppet. My name is Molly Ertle. I am the Senior Engineering Product Manager for Puppet Integrations. I'll be joined today by Greg Sparks, Software Engineer for the Puppet Integration Engineering Team, who's been vital to the development of the Service Graph Connector for Puppet. Many blockers are caused by a disconnect between IT service management platforms that manage processes and IT infrastructure automation platforms that manage technology. Processes and automation often live in different places. On the left, you can see that ITSM, focused on operations, planning, building, and delivering, is very process-oriented, with a focus on changes, documentation, and approvals. The right side represents infrastructure automation platforms, which are primarily action-oriented, with emphasis on automation in the development cycle. Let's now discuss two separate cycles as they relate to ServiceNow and Puppet. Now and Puppet are commonly used in parallel, but up until this point have not been able to work in conjunction. Now has primarily been the space to focus on process and Puppet the action-oriented space, but the two have only been as strong as they are separately. We have found that nearly 80% of Puppet's customers also use ServiceNow. That being said, commonly organizations have both a Puppet admin and a service admin, so the two tools are often operated in silos. The new integrations we will detail throughout Puppetize Digital, and today the Service Graph Connector for Puppet specifically, have brought down this barrier. ServiceNow and Puppet have a large mutual user base, and with the new applications Puppet has built, they are able to be used together, making both platforms more impactful to companies. By pairing a process-oriented platform with an action-oriented tool, the efficiency, efficacy, and power of DevOps is bolstered. In this session, we'll be detailing the Service Graph Connector for Puppet, which enables up-to-date asset management. The Service Graph Connector for Puppet is an application that Puppet has built for the ServiceNow store, allowing for data to be ingested from Puppet assets into the ServiceNow CMDB. This integration allows for streamlined, automated data mapping to enrich the CMDB. This greatly improves visibility into data and serves as a platform for business decisions. The Service Graph Connector for Puppet will create and update a company's CMDB records. Puppet facts will be visible via new tabs in the CI record. And most importantly, once this mapping is completed, automated runs will happen on a customized time basis with a default of 30 minutes. Additionally, if you tuned in to our segment about the Puppet Spoke, both the Puppet Spoke and the Service Graph Connector can be used in unison to create a very powerful wing-to-wing -wing DevOps process. Why use the Puppet Service Graph Connector? Without Puppet's Connector, Now customers must rely on Now's discovery to keep data up to date. These runs are less frequent and often impact stability, creating a need for updates directly from Puppet. Out-of-date CMDBs are a problem for many organizations. They result in data inconsistencies, lack of infrastructure maintenance, overspend, and most importantly, security concerns. Puppet already knows everything about the systems that it is managing using the Puppet agent. So using PuppetDB as the direct pipeline to update your CMDB ensures efficiency and reliability. Lastly, we will discuss the how. The ServiceNow admin will install the Service Graph connector for Puppet from the ServiceNow store. The process to configure and start the data import is relatively simple. Additionally, a setup wizard makes installation even more straightforward, and built-in defaults make mapping intuitive. Customizations to mapping can be made if desired by your organization, and as always, Puppet is willing and able to support any installation or setup that your company partakes in. Feature requests. The uh, Puppet Integrations team is always looking to build out our portfolio of integrations. So if you have any feature requests that you would like to um, submit to us, you can see the link here and that will take you directly to our page where those features can be requested. And with that, I will pass over to Greg for the demo of the Service Graph Connector. Okay, thanks Molly. Um... So to go over the graph connector for Puppet, uh, here we have a Puppet Enterprise instance with three nodes under management. Uh, and what this, uh, as Molly mentioned earlier, what this integration is gonna do 
is bring over fact data about these three nodes over to the ServiceNow CMDB. So let's head over to ServiceNow. And the best way to access the installed graph connector is just to type up it. And as Molly mentioned, we have a handy setup guide here, which will guide you through um, firstly, setting up your connection, which uses a Puppet RBAC authentication token, uh, which has already been set up for our convenience today. Uh, and then the other things that you can configure here uh, are updating the optional uh, parameters other than the defaults. So the first thing you can do is can add additional facts. So let's, let's do this first. Uh, and here we see a list of facts. We have the name of the fact. Uh, we have the type of the fact. And this is either a regular fact, a custom fact, or a trusted fact. Uh, you can set a character limit on the fact. Uh, and you can set it to active or not, depending on whether or not you're interested in bringing that fact over. Uh, and this is really great because we ship a reasonable set of defaults for, um, for every system. But if you'd like to include additional facts, custom facts uh, that you want to be brought over and mapped into the ServiceNow CMDB, you are very easily able to do that by simply adding rows to this table. So this, this is one of, my, one of my favorite features here. Uh, we can go back to our setup. And this is again. And the other thing that you can configure with the graph connector is the additional properties. And so this, um, this includes things like how many nodes to request from the Puppet API on each page of the, of the API request, um, how long you want to set a limit before a fact is considered out of date and is not being updated by BE. Um, and you will be notified via, via a little red dot next to the record if it's out of date, so you can go and address that issue. Uh, and you can also specify uh, which types of nodes you'd like to bring over, which is very handy. Some people, you know, are looking to bring over only Windows or only Unix or et cetera. And your last step is just to configure the scheduled import and just say how often you want the uh, facts from Puppet to be synced over to the ServiceNow CMDB. And you're good to go. It's a very simple setup project, uh, process. Um, and it, it should be pretty quick for most people. So let's go ahead and try and run this here. Let's go over to our, um, uh, let's see, import schedules. Typically, you would use this to schedule when the import wants to run. Right now, we're going to run it just right now. We'll hit execute now. And we'll come here. And right now, the import is currently running. So if you'd like to see the progress on the import, you can go over to the nodes import table. You can see we've done a lot of other imports here uh, in the past, uh, but you can see that these top three here, which were just created, it says just now, are now pending. If we refresh this page, right now they're still running, but if we come back to this in a moment, uh, these will then be uh, complete and we can see the facts that are brought over and then inserted into the ServiceNow CMDB table. And while we're waiting for that, the other thing that is extremely configurable here is if you uh, need to map your Puppet facts to the ServiceNow CMDB in a custom way and in in not the default way, you can certainly do that. So just type ETL here, open up the integration hub ETL, select the service graph connector for Puppet, Excellent. Okay. So what we can do here is we can um, load a new data set. This one seems to work fine. Let's go ahead and auto pull a new one just for safety. We can save that. And we can say that was saved. Mark is complete. In the second step, you can review the data that was brought over and transform it into new columns. So here you can see some fields that were brought over. Some of these are raw data from Puppet, and some of them are um, 
columns that we've created uh, and calculated from other values, which you can do here uh, any way you want to. You can see there's all kinds of data here. Uh, and thirdly, what you can do is you can take a look at, say, uh, this Linux server CMDB class and edit the mapping. And this is, this is where the real configurability lies besides adding your own facts, is you can say that I'd like this serial number column in the ServiceNow CMDB Linux table, CMDB CI Linux server, to be set to this particular value. And so on the, on the right side here, you'll see some sample values that are brought over from Puppet. You can see what they look like if they're what you're looking for. And you can just drag and drop these data pills back and forth in between these until you come up with a mapping that works for you. And if you don't see the CMDB table here that you're looking for, you can simply add attribute um, and you can add um, search for the CMDB column name that you're looking for. All right, let's head back to our import and check on see how that's going. All right, looks like that's still running. Let's wait a little bit. Um, and let's see, the other thing that you can do while we're waiting for this to, to run here, let's take a look at what it's already finished while we're waiting. And you can see that the facts data, the raw facts data hash comes over with uh, each fact name and the value. And then we go ahead and um, make that a little easier to read here. Um, in this Puppet uh, import table. And eventually, once the import uh, finishes running, let's go back to node import table. Uh, you can, this will then be processed and create a Linux table like we saw before. So we can go ahead and search just for the Linux table while we're waiting, because we have a few that are already done. And you can see that these various tables are created. You can see that this particular machine um, has been created under the Linux CI table. Let's see, will load for me here. There we go, excellent. And you can see that all the fact data has been mapped to the appropriate field. If you see empty fields here, or they're not the value you'd like, you can go back to that ETL mapping and change them to the values that work for you. Additionally, if there's a value here that's not provided by default, uh, you can either add an existing fact in Puppet to that fact configuration table, or you can create a custom fact in Puppet and bring it over as well. So that, you know, the world really is your oyster in terms of whatever piece of data you'd like to bring up. Um, okay, so this one is going to take a little while, but that's all right. We won't wait for it to finish. Um, and I think we'll proceed to see if there are any questions. Thank you.